All right, I think you guys should be able to hear me now. Uh, yep, that's better. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So I'll go ahead and just get started explaining what we're going to be using and stuff. Um, hopefully we get some Skull Squad members in. So you can let me know if you can hear me. I think it's working. I think it sounds good. Yeah, can you guys hear me? Yeah, alright, whatever. So what we got here is this design uh, of death, right? The Grim Reaper, La Muerte. Um, so this design, if you go down below, right below the video, right, right below, there is a description. There's a link to this that says stencil link. You could go ahead and just download this uh, free for yourself if uh, you, know, you want to do this exercise at home. So all I've done is traced it onto some paper here. I've got it kind of big, you know, it's like like two hands, you know what I'm saying? Um, and all I've done is pre-cut all these lines uh, with a razor blade right here. So I have all this pre-cut and that's what you got to do to get it ready. And I'll then I've taken some spray adhesive, laid some spray adhesive on the back of our paper. I've stuck it onto a canvas here. And we're gonna head, go ahead and go through the whole steps of getting this death looking pretty cool. So today we're gonna be using Createx illustration colors. Um, so we're gonna be using opaque white and opaque black. Um, along with the illustration colors, we're gonna be using Createx 4011 reducer. So uh, the airbrush we're gonna be using today is the Iwata HP CS and give me one second while I get my air hose So we're working with the Iwata HPCS today. Um, it has a 0.35 millimeter needle. I'm just making sure it's clear. Um, what else do I have to say? Oh, we're working about 20 PSI today. It might even be a little too high, but it's pretty good. That's what we're gonna use today to practice. So I'm just getting myself nice and comfortable on my chair. Make sure this is nice and clear. And we're gonna start with just some straight up black. All right, so I'm just gonna take some black. We probably don't need all that much. So it's only like, only up to like right there, right? That's what I'd say, like right there. That's about how full I have it. I'm gonna put the cap on it. I'm gonna move these to the side. Set this to the side so we could pull the pieces where we're actually going to paint. So right here in his ribs, we have all these little pieces, right? That are like in between his ribs. We want to pull those pieces out and we want to leave the actual rib cage in place. So try to get all these out of there. And I used two pieces of tape to put this together, so. Oh, great. So this area is just fantastic. There you go. It's just extra thick right here. Oh, come on. I was trying to be careful when I was cutting it so I didn't cut down to the canvas, right? So you want to be careful. Oh my gosh. It's just 
It's coming out of pieces. Anyway. There you go. Once we get this rib cage pulled out, it should be alright. Oh, there, I just cut through the canvas. I felt it go through. <laughs> yep, there's a nice cut in it. That's alright. Put a piece of tape in the back, it'll be fine. Just continue pulling, pulling all these little pieces out. The bottom of the rib cage here can also come out. stubborn right here it's really just the tape putting the tape on the paper makes the paper think that it has extra superpowers I can't really see this anymore there you go Yeah, back here in the paper bits, it comes out like no problem. There you go. And I think there's a couple more here. Just trying to grab it, pull it. And this is a brand new blade too, so this is just being stubborn. Anyway, we got all that out. <clears throat> get all this neck piece. These, we could get this mouthpiece out, the nose, the eyes, get all that out of there. What else can we get? There's this big piece down here. So if you could get this piece out. this little the nose and eyes on this little skull on the hourglass get all that out and this is just going straight black so it's quite okay get all that out and what else there's this one piece right here as well that this can go black in between the hourglass and his robe right death wears a robe is that what he's wearing or is he wearing some like special garment that I should know just a little tiny piece there you go Cool. And that piece right there. Oh, and then there's this piece on this side. I'm just kind of going through and just making sure to get a good look at it. That piece, there's a little tiny piece in here. That's it. So we're just going to come in with the black. <clears throat> we're just going to hit those little spots. All right. Just going to fill those in with black. Simple. Nothing fancy to do here. Just fill them in with black. And I kind of chose the design because it is almost Halloween time. So it'll give you guys something to do. While Halloween's around the corner, we'll probably do a couple other streams this month. Also, spooky themed. And, yeah. That's pretty much it. We got those all blacked in. <laughs> Simple. So, check it out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a dark gray. So, I'm going to take some. Illustration white. Right. We're going to throw a little bit of that in there. 
And then we're also just going to throw just a tad bit more reducer. Bam. All right. We're going to shake this up really, really good. And throwing that reducer in is just going to let the paint mix in, you know, the black and the white. And it's also going to make it flow just a little bit better, uh, which will make this just a lot easier to do. <clears throat> Should come up with a dark gray. Pretty dark, so it looks pretty good. So again, starting around, right under his armpit, there's a piece right here. Take that off, and we're gonna start there. Just kind of shading in from the from the left to the right. We're just gonna kind of shade that in, with the darkest being to the left, and then just shade it out. To the right there and then we're gonna take this piece right here by his knee All right we could get rid of this also the one behind his knee get rid of that and again same thing on the other side both his knees He's not cut. Maybe it's not cut. Cool. I just forgot to cut this thing out. Again, just take those pieces off. And so we kind of want to shade them from the top on this left knee, from the top down. Right. And we'll shade that going down. Same thing on this side. Shade that going down here as well. And you'll find that using the dark gray like this, it'll be a lot easier to shade, right? It'll be easier to like see the tone kind of go from light to dark. Simple, right? Just shading it in. Then we can go ahead and take off. See this piece right here where I made this line? If we want to lift this kind of up and fold it over like so just so we can hit that edge just like that and then take it off then we're gonna shade again coming off this top going straight down there and again on the other side of this curve coming up on the back here for like his calf same thing coming up on the bottom over here. Shade that edge all the way around. Again, we're just throwing shading. It's pretty easy. Same thing on the other side. We're going to just take this whole leg off. And we're going to kind of wrap this. This one had the edge. This one we're just going to kind of throw a little shade in there to make it look. Same thing on the back in the calf. Just have it coming down. Kind of looks like a K. Right, and then fill in that top there. Damn. And then we're gonna take off this whole bottom waist area. So there's a cut that goes all the way across his waist, which just happens to be right on that, right there. So we want to take that off. It's all of this. Damn. And so we're going to shade this.
from this edge going around. So kind of want all the lines to kind of hit that curve going this way, right? So we're going to kind of... Uh, uh. And as we get right here to this area, we're going to shift them to the other way. Like that. Add some lines, kind of random going through. And then throw one good shade all on the edge there. Going all the way out. Now if you're good at doing cloth, you know, you probably already know what's happening here. You're just building up some cloth. Again, just throwing little smaller shades off of the ed other edge coming down. And then a shadow off the top there. Same thing, just more little edges. And we're just kind of kind of give us a good, really good base. And then we're going to come back with the white and build the highlights and black and build the really dark tones. But you'll have your whole design ready. Um, so yeah. So next we're just going to take this, lift it up all the way up to that cut. Like so. Shade it kind of like across. take the rest of that off and then same thing we want to shade it from this side over so have it coming over this way some lines and a shadow all the way good thing on this light over here bam bam son Where'd you find this? <laughs> so first we're gonna take off his little center chest piece there. Give that a good shadow just from one edge around. Then we could take off his whole chest here. All right, the whole rib cage. That we worked so hard to cut. We're gonna first shade off the edge there, like so. We're just gonna freehand you know, kind of an edge like this. Simple. You don't have to do too much because it's just going to kind of be faded into the into the design. So it's even though it's a focal point, the more you add, the more you're probably going to actually draw away from the rest. So just a quick little thing just to make it, you know, once it's there. And then in the back, once we go back and add some highlights and stuff, you can really tweak it the way you want. So <clears throat> anyway, continuing on with the robe. We're gonna move on to this side, take this whole piece off, and then see this V shape right here? Right, this corner? We're gonna use that corner and come down. That's his elbow. So coming down off of there, going this way, and then these are gonna kinda go this way. And then we can kinda blend it in. You see this, this other place right here? We're going to come from here to this, blending it the other way. See that? And then we could come in off this edge going this way. And that's going to give us the folds in the fabric. We're going to just come all the way around. Pull off this first piece of hair. And we're gonna shade that coming from his head. This way. some lines a little bit of shading again you could get crazy with it once we actually kind of finish it actually look better if you do some white hairs coming around anyway then instead of more more too much gray or black and same thing coming off the top 
going down as such. And that gives you the layers of the hair kind of blowing by. We're gonna go around and you see this piece, this is hair that should be cut right here. Get this whole piece out of there. And we're gonna do kind of the wrap around with it. If you could get some lines kind of wrapping around. Perfect, just try to keep them in the white as much as you can. Shade it off the top. Coming down. Bam. Bam, son, where'd you find this? And then we could take, actually, moving on to this other, other side. There is this other side of this hourglass. That is actually the guy's like, uh, see this, that piece that right there that just came off? That mostly came off, but left some residue. Well, come on, get off of there. take that piece off and we could also take his whole arm here take that whole piece bam legit then we're gonna kind of just around some C's right going around then we're gonna kind of shade it down the middle shade it down the middle if you want to accent your C's and stuff, make it look nice. Then, like with all these designs that I do, the more time you take, the more awesome you can make it. I'm just kind of going through so that we don't have a four hour long video on YouTube explaining how to do this. So again, just going to start with the hourglass here. Take this. Well, you can take the whole hourglass off, basically. I hope you you did a better job of cutting than I did. This, I know next time not to use tape. The tape just makes it really. Cutting tape on the canvas is not a good idea. Come on. There you go. Oh, don't don't take the finger. There you go. And take off this other side. Cool. Now obviously here you can decide how much time is left in the hourglass. I suggest you leave a little bit of space right between the edge and where you want your stuff to be. Right, so I'm just going to kind of give it a little wrap around right here. Going to put a little pieces drop in and then going to kind of build out the bottom there. See this. Shade around the fingers right here. Bam. Shade under the skull. Bam. We could take this last piece of cloth at the very, very edge. Take that off. I like how that piece cut really good. Good. And then we could just kind of come off the edge there going up. Sweets, take off the sticks that are holding up or giving this thing shape. 
Take off that one. Take off that one. Come that one now. Kind of just give that little shadow there. Bam. A little shadow coming off the skull. You can take off the skull here. See that? Ooh, it's pretty. Alright. Here, where's that one? Take this piece real quick. And that shadow back in right here. Edge. I'm gonna build up your skull here. You can just give him, you know, missing teeth, a little bit of dots. Bam! Uh, then we can take off his rest of his robe. Not his hood, leave his hood behind. If you've cut right here, just leave that all the way. Take all that off. And we're gonna come off his shoulder, going, going down right here. And then going towards the front there. Shade around there. Coming off the back, going towards the front. And then just pretty much have fun with it from there. Jam it in. Again, don't worry too much because we're going to come back with white and anything you kind of feel like you want to highlight, we're going to get there uh, once we're all done with all this. So make sure you hit this edge of the stick here before we take that off. And we're going to take off the handle to his side, going all the way. Shade off off the left, going down. All right, come back, and if you want to texturize it, you know, do a little, little swatching. Do some strokes while you're just going up and down. A little bit of random, you know, it looks good. Go all the way up to his hand, or shade it down. You take the top part off. All the way to the top, same process. I'm going to stand up for this one. Come all the way up, again, swatch it. Just go up and down and pull back and forth on the trigger while letting, you know, letting some paint fly. Just keep going up and down. And that's just a really nice, easy way of making some texture there. Cool. Whoa. Almost fell back. Get it all nice and texturized. Cool. Take off this little tiny piece off the top of the scythe. Get a little bit of shading in there. And then we can take off the blade. And then the edge of the blade, we're going to leave white. We're going to kind of come all the way down. With a shadow kind of right next to the edge. Right, shade it like around right here, going up, and shade it coming around. Bam. And then throw some, some, what were those called, uh, blacksmith marks, you know? If you want to throw some blacksmith marks all up in the, somebody was pounding on this blade, you know? The blade of destiny right here. So get that all in there, pretty good. We're gonna start off by removing his palm area. This is cut. So you lift that all the way up to his thumb there. And we're gonna shade it off the top, bam. 
put it back down. We're going to start with this top finger. Take it off. Right at that bend, we're going to come around and shade it and down. We're only trying to hit that edge. I really want to leave the thumb in there. Then hit that same right there. Make it go down. Do the next one. Just like a little, it's like a little C right at the edge right there, and then just shade it back and down. Now you get that knuckle impression. Get that knuckle. <laughs> And then we're going to go ahead and hit it this way, that way, and that way. Basically the same as the other one, just kind of a little bit less. Now you can take off your thumb and shade it off the back over here at your thumb area. And you got your hand holding your stick. Cool. So we're almost at the home stretch here. So we're going to start by removing, actually. Actually, we're gonna start by removing his lower jaw. The lower jaw, we're gonna shade it off the jaw sides going down. All right. Bam. Bam. Now, if you have good freehand skills, you can probably get some teeth in there. If you want to cut yourself some teeth, you know, have them pre-cut, you also can modify the stencil in that way, have them pre-cut. But if you just freehand some in like this, and then we go back with the white, and we'll highlight those little areas, and it'll give you a really good impression of teeth. So now we can take off this top piece. Bam. All right. All right go in here, shade the cheeks. We're going to do the teeth. And shade off the top there. Then we can take off his head. And we're pretty much already looking at it. You know, pretty much mapped out. Down from here, if you've been saving your stencil pieces like I have right here, right? I've been putting them all right here for most of them. If you want to go back with the black and you want to hit some of these areas, you can put it in. I personally like to go back and use a little bit of freehand um, to kind of hit those edges and bring it in kind of, uh, what would you call it, like a focus, you know? So it doesn't look so sharp. Everything doesn't look, have to be so sharp. Some edges could be soft. Maybe you want some you know, some different uh, effects and stuff, you know, to come in here, some different shadows, uh, that'd be great. So I'm just gonna take my gray, empty it out. If you have cups where you save paint, you could always save this uh, gray paint here and use it on a later project as well. So just make sure your cup that you're putting it in is airtight and you should have no problems at all. So I'm just taking a little bit of soapy water, rinsing out my airbrush real quick. Make sure we get all that color out of there. And then use a quick paper towel to clean out any kind of leftover residue. Cool. Then we're gonna just take some, that's not the illustration black, some illustration opaque black. We're gonna do the opaque black first. Again, probably don't need too much, just a little bit. And again, we're just going to kind of follow what we've already done with the gray. I'm just going to kind of freehand it in. But from here, you, get, you guys should already have a pretty good idea of the design and how it looks. I personally like to do a little, you know, freehand flare so it gives it that more kind of see how it's like softening it up a little bit you know maybe you add some more 
frilly is coming at kind of coming off there you know this is where you can kind of start having fun with it and set yourself up for a good uh, layer of white highlights so you know not everywhere you put the black but say you see you want to add some you know some like uh, what do you call it when the cloth is getting messed up there at the edge so like raggy frillies I don't know what you call it right you can set yourself up so you you put the black and then when you come back with the white it'll really look make them look like you're popping you know but you don't have to do that everywhere so like here I'm probably not gonna put white in, in that area just coming around and I've seen a lot of death pictures where it's just black you know the people just just a black outfit but I, I kind of like mine to have more texture he's kind of like menacing it almost looks like his cloth is moving like it's just it's alive or something right and again right here if you saved all your pieces it's it's really helpful um, to make this I kind of like the way it looks already I'm not gonna do too much and we already did the black on here so it's pretty good but I'm just gonna kind of throw in a little black around the skull right here shadow coming in you know, just little touches this is the time to do it and that illustration paint straight out of the bottle is, is it's really opaque and it also uh, it flows really good oh we forgot to do his fingers over here so we could actually just take all those fingers off because all we're gonna do is shade it from that edge up. Simple. Now you can see here, I have those rib cages already in there. But I want the frillies to really stick out over the rib cages, right? Because that rib cage is kind of in the back behind him. So I'm kind of setting myself up to make those highlights right here over the rib cage, right? So same thing on the other side. Kind of coming this way. Coming off that same elbow, just throw in some nice shadows to accent what you've already done. We probably don't need to hit any of this, maybe just that edge, just slightly. But honestly, it already looks really good. Uh, you know, throw some really gonna be coming off of his uh, thing right here, his hood. There's some shadows going back. His hair. on his skull a little bit simple 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 all right so now I'll flush out this black and we'll come back in with some white highlights and we'll unmask it see what it looks like Nobody has said anything in the chat, so I, I hope you guys can hear me good. I assume you can, because there's a lot of viewers, otherwise I don't think people would be watching. So again, we're just gonna take some opaque white, illustration opaque white. And we don't need very much, so I only put a tiny, tiny bit. And again, you know get myself a little closer here oh, bump the camera no. it's good so just gonna kind of work it in and you don't want to highlight everything right so I'm only throwing highlights here on this little edge maybe a little highlight on his knee there and those little frillies that we set up ourselves. 
highlight that in. See that? I kind of throw in that rib cage back, you know. Throw your white highlights wherever you feel you need them. I like just kind of going around wherever I see. And it's pretty easy. And especially with the cloth like this, you can just kind of be random with it. Just make sure all your strokes are kind of following the same way. I like to kind of accent what I've already done. So if I see a line kind of here, I kind of go right next to it and add a little white highlight to it, extend it. You know where I see the stencil stop. Get to highlight in the teeth. And with just a little bit of practice. Again, we're working with like 20 PSI, so it's really easy to get in, in real nice and close, even on a canvas like this. So, really is across his head. Highlight his head, all the way up, and sweet. I'm gonna give him two eyes here, just gonna kinda make some nice white dots right in the center of these. I think that looks pretty good. Again, if you guys wanna take a bunch of time and really detail this out, um, you can. It's all uh, to pay this it's all based on really your skill level and how good you are with an airbrush already. Um, but let's go ahead and unmask this and see what it looks like. our cool death design anyway hopefully you guys like today's video again this stencil is free to use it's down underneath the video description and again depending on how much time you have you could really make yourself a really awesome looking design uh, thank you guys all for watching if you enjoy this video and you would like to see more videos like it uh, please click join down below the video. It helps bring more videos like this. You also get a bunch of cool perks as long as as well as early access to our channel videos. The live streams like this have a members only chat, so you would also get access to the chat. Um, and yeah, all of it goes towards helping you bring more educational videos like this where you can practice at home and make yourself into the great airbrush artist that you can be. So I'll go ahead and stop taking up too much more of your time. Thank you guys all for watching. Um, we'll see you guys in the next one. Later.